Hey guys, and welcome to A Cast of Salt. As for those that are watching, you can see our little crew has lost a man. Some, somewhat <laughs> diminished. <laughs> We're down to two. Um, so for your listening and viewing pleasure today, you have Adam. Some would call it intimate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby. Um, and for the next, let's say, hopefully half an hour or so, you'll be listening to my soothing, beautiful voice. It is me. It is Ben. And I hope you enjoy this little session of ours. Um, we have a couple of things that we do want to talk about. Um, but as per usual, if you're checking us out on YouTube, check out some of our other stuff. Um, our older Let's Plays, some of the other podcasts we've done. Um, let us know if there's anything of interest that you'd like us to talk about. Um, but similarly, if you're listening to this, um, we're, we're on all the listening options. We're on SoundCloud, um, SoundCloud we're on Spotify, we're on right there with iTunes. The rest of, right there with the rest of the rappers. The, the SoundCloud rappers. Um, but last but not least, jump onto our Discord. If you're not already there, check out all the different channels and all the different discussions that we're having. Um, a lot of these things that we talk about here, we talk about in a bit more detail there as well. So feel free to jump in and add to the, add to the discord. Yeah. All right. Are we ready for this? Discourse on the discord. The discourse on the discord. Correct. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How, so how's your week been? My week, my week has been fantastic. Oh, oh good. Huh? It, okay. It has <laughs> Wait, been... sorry. Let me retract that. <laughs> I'm awesome. taking that back. It was... Sorry, I let my excitement get the a best bit of, of me. A, it was a bit painful at the start of the week, and then it mm. was fantastic at the end of the week. Okay. Um, we had a work event thing um, where we were... Dre- we, it was a dress-up thing. We all ran around one of the Sydney suburbs doing a murder mystery. Oh, right. Okay, so I didn't, I didn't understand what happened. So I know all, <laughs> the, all my context was is that you came into my house and stole all of Leah's makeup. I, I, borrowed, I borrowed Leah's makeup. Yep. So I was like, oh, yeah, cool. <laughs> like, sure. sure. <laughs> Off you go. Whatever's happening here can't be weird. <laughs> um, we can probably put up a picture of, of, of the character that I dressed up. Basically, my team went as the uh, Mystery Inc. Scooby-Doo gang. All right. Um, and I, I dressed Perfect up. Perfect for murder mystery. Yeah, exactly right. Although um, people didn't actually die in that show. No, They're no, not like, no they did not. <laughs> like it, Scooby's like, there's a fucking shag. He's like poking a dead body yeah. being like, I don't think he's moving, boys. I, <laughs> like, oh, this is a little odd. Oh, zoinks. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> we also discovered... I think we got into the wrong one here, Scoob. <laughs> So one of one of my workmates dressed up as Shaggy, the most easiest <laughs> costume we could possibly sure. dress up as. Yep. But in doing that, we discovered that Shaggy and Morty are basically the same character. <laughs> so Shaggy, you could do the same voice and be like effectively the same thing, Shaggy right? Shaggy is the older version of Morty, effectively. <laughs> same voice, scared of everything, uncertain about everything. <laughs> So anyway, you can do a Shaggy voice and then do a Morty voice back to back. The only thing I can do Morty is you just go, oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez, oh, Rick. Yeah. I don't know, Rick. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez, Rick. <laughs> um, but you anyway. You say Zoinks with Shaggy. That's yeah, the only difference. That's, that's pretty much it. Um, so I dressed up as one of the, um, I suppose, supporting characters called right. Angel Dynamite. If Angel, anybody wanna, Angel Dynamite. wants to look look that up. Um so I'll, sounds very black exploitation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was um, Angel Dynamite? Angel Dynamite. Um, but it was fun. I'm not gonna lie. It was. <laughs> That's it awesome. was a lot of fun dressing up, um, and just running around doing this murder mystery situation. She definitely looks like a character that should exist in I in Luke Cage. Yeah, somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah. She's effectively what's like, the detective? Misty. Misty, yeah. yeah Actually, she's, she's like like a seventies version of Misty, of Misty Knight. Misty, yeah. Or the original the, incarnations yeah. of Misty Knight. <laughs> yeah. Um, Fuck yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was that was pretty much that was that was that was my that was my Friday running around Surrey Hills dressed up as Angel Dynamite. Um, I, I was initially um, a little apprehensive about it <laughs> yeah okay yep <laughs> and then i just got into it i was like screw that i'm doing this That's and fantastic. it was fun um so yeah that was my week cool any any did you get up to anything particularly exciting mm, not really no cross dressing adventures for you no no i'm not that bold <laughs> i'm not that bold i'm too boring male and white for that shit. <laughs> um 
Yeah, I haven't I haven't been up to too much. I've been um I've been continuing to barrel through my um speaking of being completely white, I've been playing anime video <laughs> games. Yeah, I keep what game? barreling through three houses. Still. Three houses. I was you gonna fin- say, have you finished dude, that? You finish- oh, I have. But and you, then I'm you're like going round two. Run number two. Round I've got, two. I've got four runs to do. <laughs> Each of them takes That's about hard. dude, each of them takes like the first one I was very completionist about it. Yeah. Like fucking everything. Mm. And I think that still took me ugh, I wanna say like nearly 80 hours jeez okay yeah okay it was like a really it was long a one. big slug yeah yeah it was 80 to 90 hours for my first run and then i'm like oh boy now i gotta do every I other gotta like, do it again just like pumping through run do it again run. i'm not sure i'd be able to do that it's great like, i'd finish the one run and i was just like i'm gonna put this down for a little while i oof. Nah, at the moment i've just been like smashed. Just... i've got so many other games to play too i'm like or yeah. i could just play fire emblem again <laughs> i mean i'm gonna finish and be like I'm going to play Fire Emblem. If it's what you enjoy, why the hell not, right? It's fun, yeah. And we also played um, Cyberpunk. We did play Cyberpunk. That was good fun. It was weird. It was was a bit of a weird weird. game. It was like trying to get used to a new rule set, but the game is a lot of fun. So It was a lot of fun. um, As we talked about on the end of the last podcast, Cyberpunk, Red, the new um, Jumpstart kit. If you are interested, pick it up. Check it out. It's pretty worth it. Um, It's a fun little playthrough. There's definitely some holes in... um, just what, the rules in the rules like, yeah. like we came across a few things that I was like oh fuck like, shit, how I, do you handle that and I, you kind of just roll with it well the thing is like that's like the jumpstart rules are literally a cut down version yeah. I'm sure when the full rule set comes out it Correct. will address It'll a lot of those cover a lot of the but like we got to holes. points I was like oh fuck what what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> so I so just made stuff you up. Just, yeah. You just had to be like, this is the rule. You Let's guys were the worst it. as well. You guys, we had a, we had, they gave you a structured adventure to play no. and they immediately just went, we're going to nah, do this. Nah, we're nah, going to nah. do this. No, 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 no. Immediately didn't Following do it. I was the, like, oh God, what the fuck do I do? <laughs> Following the boundaries. You guys, <laughs> you guys are crazy. It's fun, um, no, that fun. was a lot of fun, actually. That was, was that was a good Everyone good gets to be edgelords and everyone has a good time. Or just dicks. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Edgelords or dicks. You were like, you were informed. You were fucking, you were just a real piece of shit to I was everyone. A horrible human being. <laughs> it was great. I, I was surprised they didn't. Everyone I'm loved surprised, it. I'm surprised the team did not kill me. They did nearly. <laughs> they nearly left you to die. Yeah. They were like, fuck this dude. Let's just leave. This guy sucks. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, okay. So let's let's jump let's into. Get into, into the, the swing topics. of things. So, uh, as if you listened to our last podcast, a big chunk of what we were talking about was the the gambling situation in the new 2K basketball game. Yes. Has, has it come out? It's come out. Something. Anyway. Uh, yeah, it came out. Um, yes. Also, fun fact, got heaps of bugs. People hate it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The game like, itself the is... Game there's is been some just... fantastic gifts of, like, people going, is this kind of voodoo magic? Yeah. <laughs> and it's, like, a guy, like, trying to pass the ball from, like... like From one player to another? No, no, from his one, one hand, hand to the other. To other. And from going like, so I'll get in front of the camera, it's like, like one hand to one hand. And then it's, the ball will just go, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> like, instead of going like a straight, straight line, it'll like fucking just go loops. in the air. And he's like, what like, fucking what just sorcery happened? is this? What just happened? Yeah, there's animations are fucked. Yeah. Things are, people are like, really great. I'm sure the microtransactions work fine though. It's just, been play tested. Don't you worry. They have tested the gambling aspect of this game to the nth degree. Yeah. The game itself. If you ever play secondary. basketball though, that's going to be a problem. Is, you've, you've come to the wrong place, people. I, we legitimately said this before. Yeah, we it actually is, did say it that. Is a well, gambling, I was like, I it bet, is a gambling I bet game. The game, game fucking busted. It's a gambling game wrapped yeah. in a flimsy layer of a basketball game. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what it is. Anyway, okay. So we shit all over that last week. Um, we're just going to kind of bring this back we in. We shit all over again this week. <laughs> yeah. we, just, we just want to touch on uh, touch on the topic again real quick yeah. with, with a little bit of um, more recent news around the situation. So... Mm. the basketball game or 2k the new 2k game itself is just one aspect of the bigger conversation around gambling in in, in gaming in general yep. so loot boxes um just microtransactions so on and so forth um so i believe as we said before um in the uk for example the fifa ultimate team it's a massive thing there it's like one of the it's one of ea's biggest revenue streams and so there's 28 percent so there's an ongoing aspect of this um and, and so i i feel here in australia we're pretty we're okay like you you get a lot of microtransactions and whatnot but there's nothing there hasn't been any big news of people just going ape shit there was yeah so there was some there was uh 
we had a parliamentary kind of like in- inquiry, inquiry about it. it, and then they determined that loot boxes are not gambling, uh-huh. or they said by the by the, the letter of the law, yeah. are not gambling. All right. Having said that, though, there's been a lot of pushback. There's been a lot of groups. There's been um, we have been seeing a lot of stuff in Australia about trying to reclassify like re- them as gambling. And be like, listen, we know they're not gambling as gambling is defined, mm. but they use the same, the same traps and the correct. same the same um, exploitations of people that gambling does, and it still extracts money from people at the same rate that gambling does. It's not quicker. So it doesn't matter the fact that they can't get monetary items, because mm. that has been the main sticking the, point. Yes. Being like, oh, but you can't get money from, from the these game. Games. You can't take money out of the game. Mm. So, I mean, people are making purchases. They're not trying to win money. Yeah. And you're like, but the thing is, they're still doing it in a predatory way, which draws, like, they're just replacing it. It's a, it's better than gambling because hmm. there's no risk of them having to pay anyone out. Yeah, they're correct. Just, but they're, they're, using they're just the same, making more they're money. using the same gameplay loops that gambling does yes. to draw people in and exploit their, their, um, their weaknesses. Well, so, we're going to touch yeah. on this document real quick. But yes. one aspect of it um, that it says is like, it's introducing the thrill of gambling. Yes, um, absolutely. To, to kids as young as four this or is, whatever the yeah, case Yeah, this is the main is. thing. Like, if you're an adult, like, I mean, the, the thing is, there's... So, a lot of people being like, well, if you're an adult, you're allowed to do this. Like, mm. you know, and, and, and that's fair. Your prerogative. Like, like, the games need to be rated at a level that is appropriate for people that can go and gamble. Correct. In saying that, though, there's still something to say for, like, being like, well, you know, if they can do what they want. That's that's okay mm. um, because they're an adult. In saying that, though, there are a lot of adults that have gambling addictions. Correct. And so, there's been, like, lots of stories online of, of people, like, oftentimes getting into gaming to get away from, from to get away from gambling and to get away from like other addictive things that they have wrong yes. and then they're struggling with and then and, and then and then gaming and then, introduces then they, this then now. they see the loot boxes they see all this stuff mm. and they get sucked back in again correct because it's the same loop so like to be honest there, there's i think it's still even if you're just like well like we're we're focused on this because it's targeting children correct. and they're a, a, a like a um an at-risk demographic, correct? This kind of thing, correct? But realistically, though, we should be looking out for all people. Just anyone, anyone with um, a like, um, and people problem can gambling. gamble responsibly. But in saying that, though, there's a lot of people that don't fucking want this stuff because they don't want to. They don't want a gambling mechanic that's something that affects them correct. being in something completely unrelated to gambling, which is playing a fucking video game. It seems yes. it's very straightforward. Yeah. But um, yeah. So yeah, so so to that point, um, um, maybe we'll add a link in our description. Mm. But we're currently looking at a Parliament.uk um, document. It's an official published document. Yes. Um, and and this is the UK Parliament looking into um, mm. the impacts of gambling, the impacts of technology, and the accessibility of the technology and influence in yeah. in, in these games. Um, and so one of the first examples that it gives talking we're, we're talking about adults that have a gambling problem and the kind of impact it can have and why this should be something people are mindful of or the game developers or whoever are mindful of is, um, let me see if I can find the information here or maybe if you've got yeah. it, Adam, you so can kind of dig so in a little bit more. So basically, we've got saying um, that, uh, so also we should give background as well, is that all of the news that we heard a few months ago, especially mm. about the fantastic news of surprise mechanics, mechanics. Yes. all of that stuff, that was... Um, all of those hearings that we were we were seeing in the media, they were they were the the hearings to inform this report. Correct. So though they that was this this report is the the result of all of those meetings and things we were hearing about yes. previously. Um so the first example we've had there's been there's been um they've in the report they highlight a couple of really big, big examples. Things, yes. Um one the first one is RuneScape, which I honestly didn't think we'd be talking about RuneScape. <laughs> um but or automatically it says immediately it says uh, that they were contacted by a member of public whose adult son, so again, not not a child, mm. like adult son had built up considerable debts in RuneScape reported to be in excess of 50,000 pounds. And that's just pounds. Through, just through microtransactions. So, so again, for, Australian audiences, that's, that's what, what, like... Let's say 80, 80 to 90,000 $90, dollars. dollars. Maybe less after Brexit. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but goddamn. But yeah, that's that's, that is, that's insane. That is that's a house such, deposit. That, yeah, that's that is, such a huge <laughs> amount of money. 
Um, and people are like, oh, well, if I have RuneScape. the well, if I have the money, then I can spend it, right? But, but the thing is, this do- dude doesn't have the money. It's debt. Yeah. <laughs> but even if he does have the money, like you're saying, well, he does have the money, but he he, you could say like I, I could spend a whole bunch of money on shit. Like microtransactions in RuneScape, mm. and I physically have the money because I have a job. Yeah, but it means I don't have a house, I don't have a car, I don't have all these other things that you you say. Well, I just take public transport to work. I just live with my parents. I just do this. I just do that. People might have the money, but they they spend money that they would be doing Norm- to set themselves up Correct. for a for a stable life. They spend that money on things that they like they're compelled to spend on yeah because and of these kind of microtransactions. i actually had a mechanics it's not someone this this adult son is not someone that earns three million dollars a year and they spend 50 like they spend fifty thousand pounds and it's in the game to and them. they're so like it's so what like, this whatever is, this is my fucking entertainment money Budget. whatever <laughs> this person mm. has like negatively impacted their life on their spending regardless their whether they life, have the money on the not. life of their family and honestly yeah. I didn't actually think about that this is actually a much bigger impact than I had considered in the sense that this guy could end up on the streets because he's just spent so much ridiculous amount of money on on like money that he would spend like, obviously that's an extreme example but like he could have longer term knock on effects Absolutely. than the here and now oh, shit this dude spent a I just shit spent ton a of, money. of money it's yeah, but now in two years' time, you, the money that you would have spent to set yourself up for X, Y, Z, you no longer have, and so it puts you in a more well, negative situation. How about this? Brexit's in the news. Mm. What happens when there is an economic downturn and he loses a job, and he loses or whatever his job. the case, and is. all of a sudden, what you'd have in savings or what you'd have setting yourself up with assets, with a house, with car, with with whatever, like the things that you like, I'm, I'm not saying those things are necessary to have, mm. but having something that's diversified safety net, yeah, of a safety net for yourself. And when something happens, like that is completely out of your control, like the, ec- the economy takes a turn, then all of a sudden you're out of a job and you have nothing. Correct. So like all of this stuff. And then, and that, that flows on and saying like all of these kind of things, like addiction in general has huge knock on effects for, um, for the economy because you, you look at stuff like um, more people need to be on social welfare programs Correct. more people need more government assistance because they don't have the um, means they don't have to... the means because the thing is it is it's a sickness they've already it's been defined as as, as an illness mm. so they they're ill and they're unable to care for themselves um, due to um, not only like maybe their outside circumstances like the kind of economy you're already in, but they're putting pressure, more pressure, more pressure. onto the system because it, like because they're being exploited. Yeah. And that's not their fault. That's not their fault that they're being exploited. But it's it's not just saying like, oh man, what a big amount of money that is. Like that seriously affects like the rest of the system. There's yes. always a knock on effect to this kind of thing. And, and just to the touch on the point you just said there, it is exploitation. It's very mm-hmm. much a situation of well, in terms of casinos and stuff like that, it's knowing that people will struggle not to spend when they are faced with this thrill of potentially winning. Mm. Like, people that make these games, they know full well to say, yes, this is going to draw people in. This is going to encourage them to spend. This is going to be something that they're going to want to do even against their better judgment. And so it is very much a case of exploitation to go, we're going to make a lot of money off these kinds of people. Um, so th- there's there's a lot of other things in here as well. Mm. Um, and companies, a lot of the responses in this ha- have been very obtuse from companies. Um, they've, they've gone on and said like, uh, they, they got in people, they got in uh, representatives from Epic Games mm. uh, for Fortnite. And they said, uh, and Fortnite said, oh, you know, we don't have a specific cap on how much people can spend. But um, but purchases are limited to what in the virtual shop at the time, so someone like could spend two hundred dollars a day. Yeah, and you're like, that is a lot of money for someone coming back a day, a day, a single back day, a day. And thing is, people would I I would have no no doubt that people mm. would be hitting that. Yeah, would people would be buying everything they could? Correct. Um, and, and similarly, there was a point there around um, Candy Crush, for example, where it was yeah. just like, hey, we used to have an alert system when someone would spend $200, 250 in a week. Just be like, hey, you're loving this game. This is great. But are you sure you want to be spending this much? 
Um, I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Um, and then they said they they mm. made a statement to say they've taken that notification out because people were giving them feedback to be like, I know what I'm doing. Like, I, I have the money that I can to spend on this $250. And in my mind, I was like, I mean, I it makes sense in yeah. my mind to say, yeah, I get it. Like these people, if... If in terms of Candy Crush, um, whoever makes it, King, 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 um, they're like, well, this is just negative feedback from our users. Let's not harass them anymore. Having said that, though, mm. I just had a thought about this. Mm. So, you're gonna put out an email alert and uh, to notify people that you were going to say, hey, you're spending a bit of money or anything really. Yeah, like we've built, we've we're in so in in IT and software. Correct. We build lots of applications for people, and a lot of those. Requirements meaning we have to notify people of things when happening. things happen. How many times do you get feedback saying that that someone was happy that they got a notification? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. It's just like so the only time in general. Well, the thing is, some people value their notifications, mm. but they never they get an automatic notification and they might think, oh, oh, fuck, I have spent a bit of money. Hmm. Yeah, I I probably should stop. Stop. Yeah, I, I'm hitting. They or they feel bad and they're like, man, I have hit that notification like. Two week, two yeah. weeks in a row. I'm spending too much money. Yeah, and that's something that they would be like. That might be a problem for them. They will not tell King. Thanks for putting that thank email you for, notification. Thank you for telling that really me that. Really helped me. Yeah, they're not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, someone so, will be like, shut the fuck up, stop sending me shit. Correct. Which which could have easily that is been true. That is which very could true. Could have easily been opt out of notifications. Yeah. Yeah, that is but very true. Th- but what they said, oh, we've just removed it entirely. Yes. So to me, that, ah, like those kind again, of I things, didn't, I didn't think about that. That makes that makes a lot of sense. In that they would receive the negative feedback, they wouldn't receive the positive feedback. No. And regardless of the negative feedback, it's a good gate. It is a very good gate to be like, hey, this is just a reminder. FYI, you're spending a lot of money. Do with it what you want. You can just ignore it and keep spending and, if you I want. I mean, and if but, people and if people turn off their notification, mm. um. If people turn off their notification deliberately, mm. it means that like listen, like even someone with problem gambling could be hitting that limit. They're seeing it and turning it off. But at that point, it's that like you at King least has uh, done something. King has done as much. Well, they could do more. Yeah. They could not have them in the fucking game. Yeah. <laughs> but they have they have said, listen, we've notified them. They said they don't want to be notified, and we respect that. And yeah. there's at least something there. In t- having a small percentage of people come back, get feedback back, and be, like, we hate this, and they go, okay, okay. we're taking the whole thing out. Time then. to remove it all. There could yeah. have been people in there that like that, and Correct. that was helping. And it them. was helping them, and it's helping certain people to be like, this is my control. But this it, is my it, stage. And gate. the different thing is, though, it benefits King to take that out. Correct. It benefits them. They might only get two responses. Be like, people hate it. We told you people would hate the, it. The users We've have got. The users have spoken. Yeah, our two users that gave us feedback on this one notification. Yeah. And so that's like companies do that kind of stuff all the time and mm. there's there's many ways of skinning a cat when you're in it yes and, correct and just ripping something wholesale out of the program generally is not the way to go about it yeah and generally it usually means that like there's an underlying reason yeah um because putting in extra controls and gates is work and it's just easier to rip stuff out especially if ripping it out would benefit you financially mm, financially correct anyway. um so so we've we've touched on this a little bit more than we had actually intended to um is there any any other specifics we'll that you want to we'll, we'll bring up we'll get quickly into the loot boxes of this okay. which is the thing that we've kind of been really hammering on yes and then and then we'll move on yes so um yeah so basically there's been a lot of so the main the main bullet point. point that they actually recommended of all of this stuff was that they believe any gambling related harms associated with associated with, ga- ga- with gaming, gaming ugh, <laughs> should be recognized under the online harass on the online harms fucking, framework hell, i cannot right, read let me take over yeah you're I'm, recognized I'm under killing this. the online harms framework To inform this work, the Department of Digital Culture, Media and Sports should immediately establish a scientific working group to collate the latest evidence relating to the effects of gaming-like, gambling-like mechanics in games. Um, The group should produce an evidence-based review of the effects of gambling-like mechanics, including loot boxes and other emerging trends, to provide clarity and evidence. This should be done with a timescale, da-da-da-da-da-da. So effectively, it's saying... We need we, we think, need to do more research. We need we think this is bad. Yeah. We need to do more research and have evidence to prove that it's yeah. bad because we know and have research to prove that casinos and roulettes and whatnot have that addictive nature to it and it's bad. 
we now need to have that same sort of thing or in the gaming space to prove that it's bad and so therefore be able to regulate it better. Yeah. So the ingoing assumption and the ingoing conclusion, uh, air quotes conclusion, is that it is bad. Yeah. But this, the parliamentary finding here is saying, let's yeah. go with that, but let's back it up with actual evidence. Yeah, so a lot of the stuff around loot boxes as well, they kind of they have their own little section for loot boxes as well. So basically what they've talked about um, that... Base uh, a distilled version of they didn't buy the uh, the the idea of surprise mechanics. Mm. Um, with no <laughs> shit. Like again, they kind of they do, if you if you read the report, there's a lot of stuff in there that they state that game gamers would be like, yeah, no shit. Yeah. Um, but the, again, like you've got to understand, like these are these are this is a very official, very these are official official people. These people probably have never played a video game in yeah. their lives, and these people also are probably like have no clue about the actual like they they they're worried they're thinking about a whole bunch of other different problems correct we have been kind of in this Very hellscape focused. for yes. quite some time now and to be fair even if they were aware of games and involved in all of this this yeah. again this is a very official thing and so yeah. they actually are going through a proper process yes. regardless so, so a lot of this stuff in here is they there's some stats in here um common uh, you know loot boxes are a common form of micro microtransactions with a 2018 gambling commission survey finding that 31% of 11 through 16 year olds have paid money or used in-game items to open loot boxes. Correct. Loot, box, loot boxes specifically. That would also mean in-game items. That would probably mean that like if you've played Overwatch and you've earned a loot box, yeah. that counts. That counts. But in saying that though, it does. It still does count because you get free loot boxes to then persuade you to go and it's buy like, hey, extra ones. You've you've finally earned this one, but if you just paid, it, you would have gotten this one. so much quicker. Because you get loot boxes less less and less frequently. Because say for Overwatch, you get one one per level, yeah, and it obviously takes you a lot longer to level up the more high levels you go. So all of a sudden, it's just like, man, I used to open up like a loot box every two, a day, every two days. Now I have to wait one a week. I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah buy some. Yeah. Um, it's how they get you. Um, so, got him. So they have a few other things in here. Um, they take a big old swipe at ult ultimate team. Yeah. Um, uh, to purchase packs. So they basically break down the concept of um, the. Uh, they break down the concept of uh, purchasing FIFA and, yeah. and packs for cards. And yeah, stuff. and purchasing um, in-game coins we don't to then really purchase need the to packs and stuff like that. Stuff also, that. just a quick yeah. um, tangent, then gentle side note. Last last podcast we we were talking, and I was just like, yeah, I got all these coins that I have on my FIFA that I've been collecting for the last ten years. Let's see if I can use it on Ultimate Team. You cannot. Um, Ultimate Team has its own kind of currency that you have to pay to earn, or that you earn through playing Ultimate Team. So. This other currency that I have so what, from all what the other are those games, coins for? I don't like. You can buy a, like you can buy celebrations. You can buy like little bits and pieces through the game, right? Um, but, but you can't the, even. But is, but the thing yeah. is, you can buy these um packs. Let's just call them packs for the sake of it. You can buy these things where it's like when you complete an objective in Ultimate Team, you get coins. You get the Ultimate Team coins in that. Right, okay. But these packs give you a bonus two hundred coins. So you're using these coins ah. to then buy this perk that then gives you a little oh, bit more coins when you do your thing. Right. So, so that's, like an, that's in the kind middle. of like the, uh, the, uh, the benefit you can get yeah. from it. But it's, it's, it's weird. It says, yeah, um, much of the evidence, uh, says, um, electronic arts release a new FIFA game every year. However, with each new release, players' teams are not transferable over exactly. and they must rebuild their teams. Purchase. Purchasing more packs acquired their Correct. players. Um, so basically they go through everything um, and... Uh, we put in some. We put in some of these concerns to Kerry Hopkins from Electronic Arts. This is the very famous surprise mechanic. Yeah. Um. Who responded that the way they have implemented this mechanic in FIFA is quote is quite ethical, ethical and, and quite, quite fun. fun. Yet this is noticeably out of step with the attitude that many of the gamers who have contacted contacted us fo following our, our evidence, evidence session, session, including those who vehemently rejected her characterization of packs as loot boxes but as not, not, not as, as loot, loot boxes, boxes but as surprise mechanics one game gamer called the company's testimony to us a barefaced lie <laughs> another told us the company has heavily marketed and referred to their system as loot boxes for several years and the mechanics of the system are exactly the same no matter who, what, what, they, what choose they choose to call it, call it. Yeah. so also gamers rise up because <laughs> like when that shit came out everyone made like, a meme about it everyone but was contacted like contacted the goddamn government and yeah. was like this is fucked. This is They're bullshit. They're lying to you. This Do is, not believe them. This that is, is absolute bullshit. bullshit. 
Um, um, and they basically, in the recommendation of that section, is we recommend that loot boxes that contain the element of chance should not be sold to children playing games and instead be in-game credits that should be earned through rewards through playing the game. In the absence of research which provides no harm is being done to exposing children to gambling through the purchasing of loot boxes, then we believe the precautionary principle should apply and they are not permitted in games played by children children until the evidence proves it otherwise. Basically, what they want to do is they want Peggy, which is the the Europe version, to basically uprate all the games and be like, guess what? Got loot boxes? These are R18 or whatever the case is. It's an M-rated game. M-rated, yeah. So, Um, um, and they should be banned from if you want to sell that game to kids you can't have loot boxes in there. correct that is their recommendation it's not a bill having said that though beans the government's taking this very seriously correct. Um, and that is a huge revenue as we said in the last podcast that's a huge revenue stream if they lose um, 30 huge, whatever huge chunks of europe which would be one of their biggest markets for fifa ultimate team correct which is their one of the biggest revenue streams as a company ea is gonna fight this tooth and nail well it also makes me a little bit worried about being like, what What are they going to do next? Because yeah. they're going to be like, well, we're going to have we to need, do something else. Something they're else. not just going to lose 28% of revenue. Are you yeah. fucking kidding me? They're going to be like, they're gonna we, do something we else. need something else. They're going to do something else. Bu- weirdly bullshit. Anyway. But yeah. Um, it then goes into the potential harms of loot boxes yeah. and so on and so forth. So again, we'll link Upgrade this document. You. We'll link this document in the description. Um, they also talk about skins as well. Yes. Um, which is a whole... Uh, skins there's, there's, betting. There's a whole bunch of things that we... That we have talked We've about and we know about before. it in the community correct um that is very well written up in this in this document give correct. it a read it's absolutely worth a read it's very interesting to see that a government body is actually taking this so seriously and like doing this research and really digging um and f- c- concluding what we've already concluded as well what everyone um, else concluded <laughs> 18 months ago yeah. um, but it's, it's a positive view yeah, it's it a, po- a positive um um perspective now to say yep something's actually been done about this or at least hopefully um so yeah please give it a read look into it see see see, see what your thoughts on what the this document says and, and let us know again jump into our discord and and feel free to chime in on the discussion as a whole um but now we're going to move on to something slightly more lighthearted and we fun. To, we have to justify the thumbnail. Yeah. This one. <laughs> Much more lighthearted and fun. Um, so for anyone that hasn't seen it already, there is a, a video glorious. Uh, trailer of Nintendo's newest thing. The new thing. The what new they got? and exciting thing called the Nintendo Ring Fit Adventure. Um, I... I don't know what else to say about it. It's... I loved it. I think I saw the first article that I saw on this thing was um, from, was I had it up, was Gizmodo, I think it was. Mm. Um, and it was, uh, and it literally said, so so Nintendo's made another weird accessory again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, it was like, yeah. it was like what it's the like, fuck? Uh, um, so, it, again, uh, maybe we can link the to the to the trailer or whatever. But have a look, see what you think, and once again, let us know what you think in, in our Discord. Um, but I have some immediate thoughts about it. So basically, we should probably like explain yes. very briefly of what this fucking thing does. Yes. So it's a ring, and you slap a controller in the side of it, and it's like so for people that are used to like kind of exercise equipment, it's kind of like a, mm. a hardened version of a resistance band. Yeah. It's like resistance it, training. Yes. So you kind of like punch it together and and it looked like it looked like there's a setting that you can turn the resistance up and down on it or so it's, it's hard yes. to push in and out oh, actually i don't think i don't know if it's the resistance itself but the 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 amount of force that you need to push in for it to trigger an action or whatever the case is right. so so oh, you with the ring one, if yeah, instead right. of having to push all the way in oh, you only maybe. have to push in a maybe. little bit um, just based on your level of fitness and strength and stuff like that. Um, so, so effectively, it's this cool <laughs> they accessory. They try to make it look cool, and it's not. It's, it's not this, fucking cool. It's this cool accessory that's supposed it's to get cool you active and working out while you play a game. Now, it has an a, a, a actual game and adventure mode where the character has that same ring. It's the same thing they do in every single... Then Whenever Nintendo need to release a game that features a new piece of hardware, the hardware has Is to be part in of the, the game. game. Like, you even say, like, even the... It, like, the Switch came out and mm. the launch... It's launch title. The Switch's launch title is... It was Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild. And you have to carry around as Link this big Switch <laughs> to plug into things. And it's, like, the... It's the best thing that you have. And yeah. it's, like, the way that you interact with the world. It's how you 
make things happen. Wink. <laughs> because. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> um, and then it's also oh. got a leg strap so that you, it, it, it picks up on your Running lower, bo- lo- lower body movement. So you're jogging on the spot to make the character run. You're pushing the, the band together to shoot and, and stuff like that. So it's got these little innovative, let's say, um, means of controlling your character through this ring and, and leg strap. Um, so it looks like it runs on a rail. Like yeah, you run on a track. It's and a track. The character, yeah, you point you jump, in direction. You jump. And you think shoot. a temple runner. Think a yeah. whatever the case is. It's the game's gonna be going regardless, or as you're jogging, but you do other things to keep your character it's alive like and, and going on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so my immediate thought is, I hate this. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> And I'm not gonna lie, and I also think that the actors that they used to do it made me hate it even more because <laughs> they were just instantly annoying and irritating and grating. Yeah, it's not um, great. But then the more I thought about it, I was just like, actually, this is kind of cool. Like, I can't <laughs> cool in the sense my, of my me thought was I hate this, <laughs> and then I thought. Maybe I... Maybe not so bad. Maybe not as so, much hate. So l- let me explain why I don't hate it. I hate it as a game because it's <laughs> it's, a sh- it's a shit game. It looks like a horrible piece of crap game. I just want to say why I hate it. The game looks bad. <laughs> well, that's the, a pretty good reason. The game looks so bad. And in terms of controls, I don't really care for the controls either. Fighting but, monsters and shit. I was like, I don't care. Yes, exactly. Okay, right. But for me, I love exercise. Exercise is a big part of my day-to-day. I... I enjoy it i advocate for it i like to encourage people to be active in whatever way they can and i see this as hopefully a good means of encouraging people to be active and at least taking care of themselves in some way yeah i th- i think maybe it's not for people like us who would yeah who, who would be to play more, a game who would be more active mm. like i i play video games so it's a break that's your being calm active, down yeah, right? it's, yeah it's your way to chill a for a little bit do so exactly right maybe um, we're not the target so, so similar to how there's we fit like i i never played we fit because it's it was just not for me but it was very popular for a lot of people they sold 20 we looked it 20, up 20, they sold 22.67 million, million units. units that is insane it is a lot my that's old, like their third most popular game ever my that's older brother crazy. had it he enjoyed it him and his kids played it like it's fantastic and again it it got them active where they may not normally have been active and that's why i'm like this is cool and i'm hoping to see it actually pan out in a positive way where it's just like yeah kids like little kids want to play games Uh, a lot of times parents are like oh i want them to be doing other things this could be a means of them playing games but still being active and actually doing something that's beneficial to them and it looks like it could be fun. I, I said that I hate it because it looks like shit for me, but it could be very much a very fun thing for a lot of people to do. As the trailer went on, there was also some interesting things Correct. that I think that maybe we would do if we were playing. So there's like just exercise mode. Yes. There's literally like you can do, you can have a fun mini game version of it, Correct. or you could just do literally like you just want to do your where workout. It was like, here is a workout routine. Correct. Today's like today's you're focusing today, legs today. Today's chest day. And you're gonna do your pecs. You're gonna do your. You're gonna do your fucking. I'm gonna fuck up yeah. all the names of these muscles <laughs> yes, now. Please, Adam. <laughs> my pecs and my sh- like shoulders. Yeah. Um. And then you. Where's where are the traps? The traps are at the back. Yeah. <laughs> you work on the traps. You're gonna work on you know. Work on the pectoralis. The, the lats. The lats. Man, I'm 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 killing it. It's okay. But yeah, so like you, you do all that stuff. My fucking brother, who's a personal who was a personal trainer, is gonna like be like, like, what are God you? God damn it, Adam! Yeah, you moron. Um, um it's like you're a goddamn athlete. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, but yeah, so you you mm. so it actually gives you those muscle groupings and be like, here are the exercises. This is what you're gonna do. He's also how to do them. It, if yes. you don't know how it to gives do them you the correctly, visual prompts to say this is the form that you should have and this is how you should be doing this specific action. And I was like, what? So, that's I mean, that, you, that it, to me is more interesting than like a game where I'm running the game. on the spot and yep. shooting things by Correct. fucking clicking my hands together. But <laughs> like um, again, different things. Exactly. So so I see that as very useful. It's a shit. I don't I don't I can't afford a gym membership. I don't want to go run outside or whatever the case is. I can just do this half hour thing, fifteen minute thing, whatever the case is, at home playing a game and then maybe we should buy one of these for ben yeah <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's also the mini game version where it's just like the same sort of the thing but it's scoring you and you can compete with other people to try to beat other people in certain things yeah so the more that i watch that 
like you said, I the like, less I hated it because yeah, I was like, like, this is cool. This okay. is kind of interesting. I can see the benefits okay. and I actually really hope that it would be successful in order because of those 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 well, beneficial this is, traits. This is really to it. funny because when Labo came out, I was much more excited. I yeah. still didn't buy any, but I was like, <laughs> I don't know. I was so excited I didn't buy anything. Like, but um, it's awesome. I don't want it. Don't care. <laughs> um, but yeah, mm. when it came to parting a hundred dollars out of my wallet, I was like, like no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> not that but awesome. In saying that though, like it, it like that that idea really excited me. I was mm. like, oh, that looks really cool. And then. And then it's done okay. Yeah. It hasn't done particularly great, mm. but it's not like a huge colossal failure. But you know, it's just it is thing. what it is. Yeah. Um. But and then this thing comes out, and I'm just like, this is the dumbest thing ever. Like, why do they? We fit, and they do this. They did like, why? What, why what do are they, they doing? do it? Why? Yeah. And I'm like, you know, why they do it? Because it makes money. <laughs> it makes more money than all of their other weird bullshit accessories they've done over the years. Yeah. These exercise things make. Lots of money. Makes a lot of money. And it's not like people... We go... We laugh at it and be like, this is stupid. And go, well, to be honest, probably a lot of people are going to buy this. Yeah. I... I it, will it will it be better than the Wii Fit? I don't know. Mm. In saying that, though... Who knows? I've already seen some reactions of people that, like, did like the Wii Fit. And mm. people were like, this looks better, like, technology-wise yeah. and more intuitive-wise yeah. than the Wii Fit. So, yeah, maybe like to be fair, the Wii Fit like, balance board was like impressive. But a lot of people like that for like the yoga, yeah, and kind of that stuff. The but they're like, but this is more like you can do a workout, yeah, maybe. I don't know, yeah. Um, so, so watching this and like thinking about this got us thinking a little deeper and exploring a little bit. So, we did a little bit of a hunt. Is it the stupidest thing that Nintendo have ever put out <laughs> as an accessory? Short answer is no, no. not by a goddamn one Hell shot. no. Um, but there are some really weird and interesting stuff as well. Yeah, man. So, it's been really once again, we might link it in the description. But there's, we found an article that's just like... Uh, it's, it's Nintendo, Nintendo Life. Life. It's classic Nintendo. And it's talking about the 30... 30 weird and wonderful peripherals by Nintendo. And there are some strange things There's some things crazy in here. shit that we're not even going to talk about because like no one has fucking heard even of Even heard things. of it. But there's some cool ones as well there's that some... we've had, like the Game Boy printer. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that shit. That was great. Are you kidding that, me? But, so uh, like the, the thing that like I, I the where I used, because you could, apparently you could do, there was like a little drawing system, I mm. think, that you could then print off your drawings. Exactly, I yeah. I, remember I think that was the my main... Friends. The main uh, program for it. Correct. Having said that, though, that is what not what I and most of the people I knew used that printer no. for. We used it for Pokemon stickers. Correct. Pokemon Yellow, baby. The OG Yellow. You get on and you, you catch a Pokemon and, and you, you go to the Pokedex. You can print the sticker print, out. You print out your sticker. Have a, literally you put a little sticker on it. It's fucking <laughs> awesome. Like I don't give a shit. That was great. That I love that. It was fantastic. It's a kid. I fucking thought that. I did not have one, but I one of my friends did, and yeah. I was like. Yoink! <laughs> uh, I'm borrowing this, and, and and the the super interesting thing for me here, and we'll maybe touch on a couple of of, of the the weird mm. and wonderful peripherals. But the super interesting thing for me here, and oh, I, I okay, this Nintendo hands free one is some, one that I actually really like. I've never seen it before until we saw this list, but we'll touch on it the, in a it's second. From 1990, and it yeah. was for the uh, the NES. Yes, I think so. It was for the NES, um, and it was for yeah. it's it's a it's an accessibility thing. It's li- literally for people that can't use a controller and they don't have the means to be able to play the NES as everybody else would. So it, it focuses completely on something strapped to your chest, and you can move by blowing into tubes and and hitting things with your chin and yeah, like a whole. So like, similar to those like, mobility, like the the wheelchairs and mobility yeah. scooters for people that yeah. don't have the means to be able to 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 move themselves around. It's body movement, little, little body movement. I'm um, using the tube for A and B, so sucking in for B, put, um, exhaling for A, or whatever the case is, and just finding different ways to allow people that normally aren't able to play the game. And I was just like, "Holy crap! I had never heard of it, but that is so cool." That's cool for them to have put in the effort. In that early too, when video in gaming the 90s, was such a niche thing, where you're like, "We're not selling this to like." Gaming wasn't mainstream. We're not yeah, selling this to, to everybody. millions of people. Mm. And where we think, well, you know, in the millions of people, there is going to be a good chunk a good of people chunk. that are going to need accessibility options. Correct. This is a niche market. And, and quite often in those days, people were like, we just got to cut, like, make games for the least amount of money as possible. Yeah. Game game teams are f- two, two, three people. people. Yeah. And we just make a game and 
put it out there and they didn't think about that kind of stuff yeah. because they were like, well... If if you can't play it, you can't play it. Yeah, because but, like we're, we're trying to cut costs because it's so niche. They're yeah. just trying to like make it work to using the least amount of money as possible. But for them to be like, you know what? No, people want to play this yeah. and we should let's give make everyone a, let's make a possible the chance for them to, to play be able this. to play our games. So I was really, really impressed with that. I mean, it's pretty basic. And to be honest, looking at it, I don't know how well it would work. But I, it, I, I it have would no work. idea. But then again, it would be better than not having it at Being all. Being able to play it all. <laughs> exactly like, right. Otherwise, it's, you can't. Um, but yeah, going through this list actually got me thinking. It's just like, they, they have done a lot of really interesting things over the years. That's just like really innovative technologies that somehow a lot of people just haven't heard about. Mm. And it's, uh, but then they have something like the, the speedboard, speed that which is, is absolute bullshit. For the N- <laughs> again, also for the NES. <laughs> um, they, they just went, you know what we're going to do? We're going to get a bit of plastic and you're going to be able to insert your controller and it's like got click a little it in. slot for the controller to just sit in. And then you can just like play And that's it. it. And you can just tap on it on the top. <laughs> so you don't have to hold the controller. You can just be like an you arcade just, cabinet. You place you it on, tap, the, uh, on tap, a flat tap, tap. surface and, and you're playing. So you if... made a bit of plastic with the word speedboard written on it. Correct. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly what we did. Correct. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Innovation <laughs> at its best. <laughs> um, I, I have to imagine they were two separate teams. Oh, One worked on the, ha- the hands-free <laughs> system, and the other guys working on the so speed like, board. What can the we speed do? Speedboard was just we some need, unpaid intern. We need was like you got to do something. Like oh god, you've what got, do I do? You've got one team working on the hands-free. Like everybody's going, wow, these guys are doing amazing. Really pushing then, the boundaries of who can play our game system. And then this, this guy's is just like fantastic, fantastic for people. I, I have an idea. Listen, just just hear me out. That's the good, spe- but... The speedboard. <laughs> <laughs> the speedboard, it lets you play it as if you're playing on an arcade no, machine. Oh, speedboard, like, okay. okay. Make, does, it, does it like make you press the buttons faster? Quicker, can, it, can it make, make you, you react make a little you bit better faster? when you're is playing it, um, is it better for people battle like, games and quicker? No, oh, no, 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 no. Not really, no. It just makes it play it on a just, flat surface as if you're playing it at an arcade. Oh, so does it have like the joystick and the buttons? And like, like, like buttons? a bigger button so you can actually hit the buttons faster and like, because they're bigger, right? You're hitting them with your fingers rather than like... No, 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 no. It's still the same controller. Oh, it's oh okay. It's same size. It's mm. actually going to be a little bit harder for you to press the buttons because you're pressing it flat rather than holding it like a controller. And they're still small, right? They're still just as small. The exact mm. same size. Still a D-pad. There's nothing else. Still a D-pad. Mm. No joystick, but on a flat surface. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make 10 million comments. <laughs> <laughs> we are producing 10 million of these right now. Oh my god. And of course, <laughs> and the most we could classic. Never, we could never talk. There's there's lots of other ones which we'll probably dig into, but there is no you can't there is go nothing past. we cannot talk about NES controllers without talking about the power glove. The power glove. The power glove. The, I've uh, never owned one of these things. I, I would take one out of someone's dead corpse, <laughs> dead fucking hands. If someone was buried with their power glove, Adam would I'd be desecrate like, that I would be desecrating their grave for that claim, power glove. Claiming the power it glove. Is the coolest looking thing I think they've ever made. It is. It I think it's also, it's also cool because mind. it's also super cheesy. And it looks like... Oh, yeah. Imagine... Okay, think of the practicality. So, like, obviously, like, it's like kind of a wrist-mounted And you're just like... It, Which is like speedboard, but only one hand. Yeah. <laughs> it's it is someone in Nintendo oh, going. God. They watched. They saw Tron. And they, they saw like, Tron. They saw some futuristic movies from the sixties, and they were saying, thinking that is the coolest shit I have ever seen in my life. We need to make so this the a reality. Came out in eighty nine, which is the year Correct. we were born in. And the next year, they came out with a hands free. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Like, laughs> Um, it's amazing. Um, well, the yeah. power glove—it looks fucking amazing. Like it's just—it's—it's it's just such a product of its time that I think it's that's why such people... a product of its time. But it—I—I I genuinely think it was someone just going. Not even there, there was no thought of this is practical. There was no practicality to it. It was just this is a very this is these kids are gonna love this because they think it looks cool as shit. And does it work? Not really. <laughs> it it plays the games and barely. But... <laughs> Oh, but God damn it. Yeah, out of this imagine, list, this is 100% imagine, what the so one like, that I would have gotten. When we're playing games, mm. play games together, you come over and I'll give you a controller and be like, okay, well, cool, we'll sit down and play some Imagine stuff. if you gave imagine, me a power glove. Imagine, no, but imagine the practicalities anyway, <laughs> of I give you the power glove mm. and I've been using the power glove. Right. And like, it looks... <laughs> <laughs> like, it looks like a like kind of plastic... Like, it looks... 
there's like it's like plastic and rubbery, right? Yeah, you'd be like having to put your it's fucking like, to play a video game. You have to put your the... sliding <laughs> into some like sweaty glove. <laughs> <laughs> like, Alright, I'm ready to go <laughs> I've got this clammy, gross, wet glove on <laughs> I'm ready to go It looks I'm ready so, to kick your like, butt Just, if you really think about it You're like, wow, that is bad idea It huh? is disgusting <laughs> <laughs> um, But it, then they've got the zapper They've got the rob They have this one-handed controller Which, I mean, you think is it's, like, oh, cool But then it doesn't really Think, again, practicality doesn't make sense there's an exercise bike. I think bike. that's third party, though. I don't think that's something that yeah. they came no, out with. No, I don't imagine they would Maybe would've. they did. Who knows? <sighs> anyway, it's it's all very interesting. But all the, ga- very the Game cool. Boy Air, the printer. The printer's the oh, best the one. The camera. There's a third oh party God. sewing machine. Oh, the sonar. Like, again, just talking about the technology. This is Japan only because, of course, it is. The technology that they've brought into this one small gaming, like a Game Boy, has a peripheral that you connect to it. That has sonar. You can literally go out fishing and try yeah. to detect where the fish are yeah, underwater. Yeah, it's made by Bandai. Instead of pl- making their new Dragon Ball Z game, they went, you know what? We're going to make a fucking sonar let's, attached to the Game Boy. Our fin- fisherman <laughs> fan base. <laughs> so the thing, you, it, it we blows, got lots of fishermen out there. It blows my mind. It's like this is so cool, but it's yeah. it, the the interesting thing is just like it seems like a time or a situation where Nintendo just be like, let's just think of cool funky things that we can do like yeah. something that's not just making games or or our core thing is you want to try making a sonar machine go for it integrate it into our game boy you want to make this user accessibility thing yeah try it why the hell not so I, i'm actually quite happy we've come across this list because it just blew my yeah. mind as to the amount of cool and random things that they've done so the hmm. other there's two other things that i really love that i remember fondly yes one are the pack system for mm. nintendo 64 mm. so you had the transfer pack which was the best one yeah. <laughs> because that allowed you get your pokemon on a from game your, boy game from your game boy game pokemon stadium and you played with the and same pokemon. Kick ass. it's the best yes it's the fucking best seeing your pokemon from handheld on your tv was the best shit ever. Was, As yeah. like a nine year old, it was unbelievable. Yeah, and then just battling with them specifically on stadium. The, oh, it was so it good. It was great. It was so good. Yeah. And then they had a whole bunch of stuff. They had the rumble pack and rumble they also pack, had the memory, memory pack. pack. I remember the rumble pack. Well, that the, was cool. The rumble pack's quite cool. The yeah. memory pack, um, not so much, but the reason memory pack was like you just had to have one. Mm. You were just like Hey, you want to play this new game? You need a yeah, memory pack. Yeah, we need a memory pack. Otherwise, you can't save your game. I can't remember which one. Um, I think Donkey Kong Country famously needed How did it? Pack. I can't remember there either. There was a couple of the big games that were like, you need a memory pack because mm. this game is too high powered for the 64. For the 64 to manage on its own. Um, but that reminds me of the PlayStation. Like, you had memory cards in PlayStation and you needed those <laughs> for... The memory pack... Oh, my God. The memory pack got the RAM to 8 meg. A whopping 8, <laughs> eight meg. 8 meg, baby. <laughs> you know it. Um, and the other big one as well, and I hate these, but, you know, I think we're going to have an A Pinch of Salt cast member very upset if, if we, we don't, don't mention, mention these, is the goddamn DK Bongos. Bongos. So they are controls. Like, you literally play your games by beating on the bongos. We have them. We, 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 have, a we have a set. Not here with me because I'm not insane, but um, Ben but has them. That is, again, impressive shit. Actually, no, <laughs> like, no, Ben doesn't have them. Who has it's, them? It's in our box of... Oh, my God. We've got them. Random but shit. But basically, we, and I, I know how they work intimately because I've seen them work. Um, they the, the drums are split in half, so you can hit them with your palm in your hand, mm-hmm. and then, or you can hit the top. So there's four, effectively... Two buttons on each drum. Yes. So you can kind of like actually as you're playing the bongos, go one, two, like one, two or one, two. And yeah. play, play like. For those for listening, those, he, I was just making, something he was making hand, hand <laughs> you gestures. Know, watch someone playing the bongo drums or don't. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's, that's kind of cool as well. And the last thing that I wanted to touch on, and again, just talking about how happy this made me with the innovation that they had. Is, no, not the 3DS Circle Pad Pro. Um, scroll back up. Yeah. Is the WaveBird. So that is a... Oh, yeah, down. yeah, yeah, yeah. The GameCube wireless controller. Literally a wireless controller for the GameCube. In 2002, baby. And this was such a long time ago. And it was just... Did you have one? I didn't have one. It was like... I didn't even know about it until we saw this oh, list. Really? I'm just like, that is so cool. Yeah, like, yeah. 
They had wireless controllers. I think one from of my mates had one. Then, when he, his, well, the uh, the only one of my friends that, that had a GameCube. GameCube. But yes, he, he had one. Like everything is wireless now. Literally every control. Like it's easier to get a wireless controller for your console than it is to get a wired one. Well, they're generally wireless with a cable they give you. Yeah. In case the battery runs out. Yeah. <laughs> it's like so, they are wireless now. So like for them to have done this in 2002, it's that is cool. impressive stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this, this is well, Nintendo have always been pioneers list. of that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, they've just always, doing random well, because shit. the thing is, they've always seen themselves as a toy company. They're like, yes. So they're always really big in the peripherals where a lot of other places like just, where Microsoft just might throw their hat in the ring with the connect or mm. PlayStation does now with PlayStation move VR or, VR or the, or the move or whatever, yeah. or the eye toy. Like they're not really invested unless, unless they see something like a, a, a sea change, like, VR is trying to be, mm. then they'll start investing. Then heavily. they'll try to but make quite it often, happen. Like they'll make, mm. they make PlayStation made this. They came with the eye toy, and there's like three games, and they're like, oh, yeah. no one bought it. Fuck it. We're done. And with that was it. it. Yeah, no one cared. Um, but I think what is the but like the D- DK Bongos was made for one game. Yeah, like they that they make Literally. all these peripherals for one game, for and then s- and then you can you know hook the bongos up and play them with any game if like you want it's a to. Controller, yeah, but. It was made specifically for a single purpose. Play a single game. Yes, which is Um, crazy. Okay, so we we've rambled on about this a lot, Um, but. For those listening, once again, if there's anything that you've come across, whether it's a Nintendo peripheral, whether there's just any other gaming peripheral, or just a PC peripheral, I don't know, your any kind of peripheral weird that peripheral you've come from across, they're just like <laughs> this is hella weird, and this is something people don't know about. Let us know. Like I'm super curious to find out more about these things. I I can guarantee if Ben listens to this, he's gonna have a ton of crap that he's just gonna start rambling about. But I'd like to hear other people's thoughts. Look for Ben in the comments. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Anything else worth touching on? Not really. Um, I'd probably I would also recommend again just to go and read that report. Yes. Um, it is a little boring. But it's you know a, what? It's Some very things wordy. need to be boring for it's you. Very to, wordy. You need to be able to understand what's going on this um, on this ecosystem. But it's very well written. It's broken down in a way that you can find what it is a specific topic you want to read about and, and look into it and everything mm. like that. Um, it's a lot of words, but it's it's a good read. Yeah. <laughs> in the sen- in in a broad sense of the word. Um, I mean, good that it exists. Yeah. Not good for the words it contains. <laughs> yeah. What contains it is quite bad. It's just. Yeah. It's quite society destroying, really. Um, so yeah, please give it a read again. If the if you whatever your thoughts and opinions on mm. a the the whole gambling slash loot box slash um, on microtransactions conversation is, let us know. We'd love to to get your opinion on it. Um, and weird and wonderful Nintendo slash all peripherals. Let us know if there's anything there as well. Mm. Cool. Whew, that was that was that was a good cast. Whew. Who um, needs the other guys, yeah. right? <laughs> we were like, shit, what are we gonna talk about for an hour? We're like, okay, maybe we'll do half an hour, an hour later. Okay, we're done. That's every podcast we <laughs> yeah. do. Um once again, thank you, thank you very much for for listening in. Um jump onto our Discord, check out some of our other stuff on YouTube, like like, subscribe, the whole shebang. Um, let us know if there's anything you're keen to hear about or keen for us to talk about. Um, but yeah, we'll leave you at that. So, peace. Thanks. Bye. bye. Huh.